Thank you. Okay, has everybody got the cards? Let's do a quick run through. Are you glad to be here? You can either show a yes card or a no card. Of course you are. Of course you are. Um, a massive thank you. I'm just trying to look at the clock. I'm on time, so that's good. Um, I'm just going to present probably what the minister and Jenny did, but uh, in slightly different language, and there'll be uh, a few things that are just presented differently, but I think you'll find the meaning is exactly the same. So Adrian said to me, Chris, I want you to think of uh, a title for your presentation. So I sort of know the Good to Great mission and the great work that Jim Collins has done, and I've seen lots of people sort of do Good to Great. And I thought, nah, let's just make it really bizarre. So I thought I'd entitle my presentation, Where's Your Trumpet and What's Your Tune? And I just want you to think about that as I go through uh, the next 25 minutes. Because I've just come out of a chairs session, which was brilliantly sort of hosted by, by Nick Mattel and Richard. And actually, I'm sort of so glad I came up with that theme. Because the one reason we are here together today is to present ourselves as one team that's doing what it does really well. But knowing that when you get to the top of one mountain, there's usually a valley and another mountain to climb. And we all know that. So, and what tune do we play? Do we really go out there and remind everybody of the fantastic stories? Did we really need somebody to brief the minister to tell him how wonderful we are doing in and around? Because I still think CSPs, to the majority of the population, is still one of life's best kept secrets. And we have to change that. We have to become one voice. And that's one of the reasons we're here over the next two days. So I'm the Managing Director of Metro Bank. I will mention a little bit more about that uh, as we go through the presentation. I'm the Chairman of Greater Sport, and I've been the Chairman of Greater Sport for seven and a half years. And, and sometimes Richard says he never knows what I'm going to do. Quite frankly, sometimes I don't know what I'm going to do. So I remember our first ever board meeting, and it goes back to Jenny's point about excellence and governance. So I'd taken the chair's roll on, and I walked into a room which was 10 local councillors, cumulative age of about 800. I'm not joking. So Richard looked at me and said, what do you think we should do? I said, I think we should all hold hands and contact the living. <laughs> now, they were well-meaning people, but quite frankly, they didn't have the competency to actually get out there and make sport and physical activity happen. And I'm now delighted that I've got a board that would be very similar to Lincolnshire, so congratulations. And one that is well respected, that despite the fact that the Greater Manchester authorities have seen 40% of their budget cut, for two separate occasions, we've been given at Greater Sport full funding. Nothing cut, it was the same amount as before austerity and change of government and change of budgets, and we're still getting more. That's what a great board can do. Because you've got to go out there and blow your trumpet. You've got to go out there and have a product and an offering that resonates with people, that makes them want to put their hand in their pockets and then trust it to you to go out and deliver. So if you've not got the funding you need from some other bodies, buy a mirror. That's the first thing you do. Listen to what Jenny said about excellence and having a reputation for being brilliant at something and having good governance and good cost management. I'm an absolute sports fanatic. Just love sport. Sport has been very kind to me in my life. I, I came from a broken home, a single parent family on a pretty tough, rough council estate in Manchester. I went to a pretty average comprehensive school. I got pretty average results. But all of through that, sport played a massive part in my life whether that's communication skills, whether that's team building, whether that's preparation, knowing how to win with grace, knowing how to lose with grace. So therefore, I am really passionate about what sport can do, not just in health, but in actually 
growing citizens, good citizens of England. And that's why the primary school premium means so much. Get them young. Because I had a guy called Ray Woods, who was my PE teacher at school at the age of nine. And he inspired me through sport and football in particular to be a great citizen. And that's my aim today, which is why I put stuff back into sport. I mentioned football earlier. I'm the non-executive director of the Manchester Football Association. That in itself is a new term. If you go around most of the county football associations, they don't have non-executive directors. They just have old people. So I'll tell you about my first meeting at the Manchester County Football Association as an independent non-executive director. And it was at the end of the meeting. One of them came up to me and said, well, son, I was 47 at the time, right? Well, son, what do you think you can do? I said, I'm confident I can bring the Manchester Football Association into the 20th century. <laughs> You're ahead of me now. He said, son, I think you'll find we're in the 21st. I said, son, I will think I was right the first time. <laughs> and don't worry, I did the National Game Conference last week and I stood up and I challenged some of those people about their approach. Because I think the good to great mission is, a, is really something we all need to embrace. The Football Association, by their very own admission, are years behind where the CSPN is. So we should be very proud of that. I'm also a parent and I've seen my children go right through the primary school offer and one has got through university so I know the university offer and the stuff that books do and I've got a daughter at university so I sort of get being a parent as well. So quick question 30th of March 2010 was the last time I had the privilege of standing up uh, in front of the CSPN. Yes or no were you here on the 30th of March Ooh, that's a really good split. I'd say, ooh, ooh, take a look around. Keep your hands up. Just take a look around. Hmm, 70 30? 73 27? 72 28? It's like ready, steady, cook this, Richard. It's brilliant. Right, so the majority of you weren't here. Let me just share with you um, what, that, what that session was like, and then let's do a quick check to find out whether or not we've actually moved on. So, there were some working group themes, children and young people, NGBs, health and physical activity, and CSP improvement. Who thinks those messages have changed? Yes or no? It's a pretty resounding no. Yeah, we've got some other bits around the edges, but you just heard the Minister and Jenny talk about health, talk about working in partnership, talk about children and young people. That's what the Minister said. And boy, should it be a journey of good to great, that's about CSP improvement. So five years, broadly, you agree the message hasn't changed much. We then said, what would the key challenges be going forward to deliver high-quality service to our customers? In my time as a CSP chair, we started to talk about customers. We started to talk about end users. And that's why Jenny's insight is so powerful. Because when I came and joined the CSP chair at Greater Manchester, everybody thought the customers were either Sport England or AGMA, the Association of Greater Manchester Authorities. Rubbish. They're enablers. The customers are the people who you want to be more physically active more often. The people that you want to create great social citizens and make sure that going forward they have the best of health. To talk about a consistent response, not 49 different boards with different messages doing 49 different things, some of which would be brilliant and some, quite frankly, would be rubbish. And then Sod's law kicks in. The minister goes to the rubbish one, goes back and says... The CSPs don't work because, or the NGB goes to a meeting and says the CSPs don't work because. So consistency in approach is so important. And you're still allowed freedom within the framework. It's okay. But actually, a consistent response. Chatting to Andy Reid very briefly earlier, there's a diagram with 32 different groups that claim to play a part in sport and physical activity delivery. Talk about getting picked off. Talk about divide and conquer. Surely the great thing about a network and networks is to come together with a powerful voice. There's a great book by the leadership skills of Attila the Hun. 
And it's not about he just runs around killing people. He brought different tribes together to fight for one vision. That's what the CSPN is about and also its other partners. To promote innovation. And innovation has still not quite hit sport yet. Maybe if you've got your Nike band on and you're sort of counting your steps and you're looking at your calories, how long you sleep, great. But that's probably an individual thing, not a sport thing. Maybe we embrace technology going forward a little bit more later. To anticipate and adapt to change. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. To retain local identity, but be conscious for our collective brand. And it's great that we now have a brand. It's great to see the likes of Richard and Lee wearing the badges because that shows visibly we care and we want to make a difference. And the 2010 key messages. These are the key messages, the afters, that Richard and Lee at the time wanted all the attendees to take away. So how have we done? Well, well, who's in the same job as they were? If you're in the same job, give me a yes or a no. Same job, exactly the same job, five years on. That's good. That's very good. Very good. Because at the last conference, I did a presentation, and one of the things that I got was the feedback about are you an Asda or a Woolworths resonated with a lot of you. Clearly, Woolworths had a great history, had a great legacy. It was probably the most successful retailer on the planet for many years, sadly, and ended because it just didn't adapt to change. It was a bit like a dinosaur. Whereas Asda, whose mission is to always put the customer at the heart of everything. So I remember standing up on stage, I was working for the Royal Bank of Scotland at the time, and there was some real insight. People trusted traffic wardens than people who worked at the Royal Bank of Scotland. So I sort of realised that that was pretty incongruent. So I just said, look, I've got to leave RBS, because actually it was becoming the Woolworths that I so passionately said, don't become. So I changed my job, and I went and joined Metro Bank. Now, there's some lessons, I think, why Richard asked me to speak to you today around, you know, Metro Bank. Metro Bank has done something that nothing else has happened for over 170 years. The last time a high street bank was created on the high street was 1838. It was Clydesdale, the open one in Glasgow, one in Edinburgh. No one's done it. The end barriers to entry, the bureaucracy, all of that nonsense meant that you couldn't open a new bank in Britain. Well, we were the first in 170 years, so I decided to go and be its managing director. Why? Because of those three statements at the top. Number one, we were going to put the customer first. Number two, we were going to create fans, not customers. Fans turn up every week. They cheer you on. They tell other people about the experience and they bring them along as well. That's how clubs get new fans. Community programmes, that's what we've got at Metrobank. Why? Because we want more people to come through us for the next 100, 200, 300 years. And then the final one was we were going to revolutionise UK banking. Notice it doesn't say we're going to have a gentle evolution and sort of see if we can change things around here. So a little bit more about that, because I think we've got the opportunity to create a revolution. We've got the opportunity to really burst into health and get them to recognise they can trust us with their preventative budgets. So a little bit more later on. So I would say my summary is the chair of greater sport about the CSPN and the work that has happened in the last five years. It's a bit of this. Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. But there's a lot more work to do. So I think we've started working better together. But even then, there are still people, even in the chairs meeting earlier, that still are not totally committed to the CSPN that are not totally committed to Sport England's involvement. You know, if you need to go and ask your mum and dad for pocket money, they might ask you to do the washing up, even if you don't want to do the washing up. So I'm sorry, I embrace the support from Sport England, right? And I know that some of you say, yeah, but they, they don't own us and we're this percent, that percent. They're not there to own us. They're there to support us. They're there to ensure we have good governance. It's a great check and balance. And publicly, Jenny, the work you've done, and Mike Diaper in the room, right? A great job in supporting us. Greater Manchester are fans of Sport England, right? And we need to realise that we're in this together. It's not a war out there. The enemy is not some of our stakeholders and partners. It's probably Xbox 
It's probably Sony. It's probably the things that stop people from wanting to become physically active that want to take part in sport. So I think there's more work to do. But I think we've made a great journey in five years. Some of the politics from other organisations. Now, I don't know whether they're in hibernation or they disappeared completely. Right? Maybe the uh, election might sort of tease some people out. So I want you to stand up. Don't give me a standing ovation. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Stand up, give yourselves, look at your partners. Give yourselves a standing ovation, round of applause. You've done really well in the last five years. Stand up, come on. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> now read the bottom line. Right? So I am known in all the organisations I work with it's a phrase known as positively dissatisfied. I sort of do smell the coffee, but not really for very long. Why? Because when the pace of change outside is faster than the pace of change inside your organisation, disaster is imminent. So, the job of the next two days, let's go and earn another one. The job has only just started. So, Richard and Lee and the CSPN, we have a 2020 vision. Well done. We've got something. We can all rock up and make sure we're behind. We're going to get 500,000 more adults participating regularly in sport. We're going to reduce the number of adults that are inactive by 250,000. And we're going to get 1 million young people more active. Who likes, get your cards out, who likes that goal? Yes or no? Wow, 99.9% .9 say yeah. Now I'll show you our goal, because goals are pretty easy to write, you just pay a consultant, right? So there's the Metrobank one. When we started and how we started ours, we were in a pub. And has everyone sort of forgotten the paper and you just peel a beer mat in half? It's good note taking stuff, right? We wrote that down, right? And sort of 2010 we went, what are we going to do? Well, well, we'll have a million fans. We'll have 200 stores, we'll have 5,000 colleagues, and we'll have deposits of 50 billion. People said, you must be mad. No one's ever done this before. Doesn't matter. Let's just go shoot for it. So that's what we did. This is how we're doing, by the way. Just to show you that when you sit out with a big, hairy, audacious goal, a BHAG, actually you get the right organisation, the right governance, the right belief, the right insight behind it. Anything's possible. So we've got 33 stores. We've got three billion pound of deposits. 1.7 billion of lending. Remember this is from zero. We've got 1,700 colleagues. We've created more job opportunities in the southeast of England in the last four and a half years than any other organisation. That includes Shell, Sky, Nestle, everyone else. We've already got 500,000 fans. We're measured by net promoter score, 80.1. One of our major bank competitors have just written in their account that they're so proud that they've gone from minus five to plus one. <laughs> Great. Right? We don't have mystery shops. We have magic shops. We catch people doing it right. Why? Because praise brings more of the same. So we are well on track. Let me put that in context. So firstly, Simon, to you and the guys in Nottingham, congratulations. Being a mancunian in Nottingham, it's only right that I say the best team won. Well done. City of football. I really mean that. Genuinely. And I ultimately, I wasn't bothered who won. Because I knew football won. And I knew it was a great idea, actually, to have a consortium that comes together for the power of the people of a particular city. Now, I don't know whether that accent or design, I really don't. And I don't care. But what a great way of actually moving forward in some of our city, cities and towns going forward. But I'm just going to take a little bit off Nottingham now, hopefully. Good grace, but, right? I'm going to use a Nottingham Building Society as a measure for Metro Bank. So Nottingham Building Society were founded in 1864. So it's 151 years old. So after 151 years, they've managed to open and run 27 stores, they've got 192,000 customers and they've got an asset base of about 2 billion. 
but we've doubled them, more than doubling customer numbers. We beat them in stores now, and actually we're twice as wealthy. We've got twice as much financial strength and capital. We've done that in four and a half years. So the message of that is, if anybody in this room thought that that BHAG that you agree with, right, is difficult, let me tell you, it ain't. Why? Because I've been part of a team that has done it. And just take some photographs or get the slides from Jenny's uh, presentation, because it is about all of those things. Being amazing for one thing, ours is customer service. Actually having good governance. We've actually brought in people, not from other banks, perish the thought. We've brought in people actually who represent the skill set needed to go out and do the job. So as a result of Metro Bank being successful, and one of our absolute values is surprise and delight, then I'm going to get Adrian to send out this slide to you over the next few days. Basically, those are our standard rates that we would offer um, clubs, societies, associations in sport. You can see instant access. No bank needs to offer good rates anymore because they're getting special cheap lending money from government. But actually, if you're not a registered charity, I'll double the instant access and I'll actually give you the MD's discretionary rate for uh, term accounts. If you are a charity, and because of the way I have my agreement with the Bank of England, I can offer charities personal rates. So that instant access will go up to 0.75 and Jenny, of course, it's available to Sport England. Andy Reid, it's available to all SRA members, of course. Um, but that might not be as good as your other bank, but I'll tell you summer, it just might be. So when we talk about getting a little bit more and making efficiencies, I'm delighted to say on behalf of Metro Bank, we'll, we'll look after some of your deposits for you. Of course, no such thing as a free lunch, come on. <laughs> Get real. Um, so, so what are the lessons maybe that we could learn from the success of Metro Bank that I think are entirely applicable to your business, whether you're in the audience as a CSP director or chair, or whether you're a national governing body, whether you're a visitor from Norway, it doesn't matter. We talk, and we learn lessons from General Electric and Jack Welch. We talk about three things, performance, image, and exposure. Uh, I don't mean that sort of exposure, right? I mean exposure to people that can really be impressed with what you do. So let's remember what performance is. It is simply a ticket to the game. Jack Black would say, don't expect to be get promoted if all you do is just your performance. He said, if you want to get on, if you want to grow a business or grow as an individual, think about your image. Image is about being a team player. Image is about doing the right things, not getting your numbers in any way. So what can we do, what should we do to get the image of CSPN or broader sport so people can trust us with their money. So people can speak to us and about us in glowing terms. You earn that. You earn that by going out every minute of every day and doing what you say you were going to do when you said you were going to do it in the way you said you were going to do it. And if you can get the chance to surprise and delight along the way, then quite frankly, you will have people banging on your door. And we've demonstrated that at Metro Bank fastest growing bank in the history of the world. Why? Because we absolutely offer the customer something that nobody else can do. So people will want to do it. The exposure is around the exposure to people like the minister, like Clive Efford or anybody else. So here's a quick thought. How can you demonstrate to somebody you would meet in the street, in an elevator, in a restaurant, the strength of your CSP or this network. So the BHAG, from good to great, is the big, hairy, audacious goal. So question number one, what are you deeply passionate about? Are you deeply passionate about the job that you do? Show me your cards, please. Come on, show me your cards. I can't wait to see if there's any reds. I just shouldn't be here, right? But isn't that amazing, isn't it, right? But it's not surprising. Of course you work in sport for the love. You don't do it for the wages. Get that. You do it because you're deeply passionate. The question I've got for everybody in this room, though, are you absolutely a 10 out of 10 on the other two parts of that BHAG? 
are you absolutely world class at what drives your economic engine? So Jenny talked about the efficiencies. Do you absolutely challenge yourselves to be the slickest, the best operator? Right? Are you able to articulate how you go about doing it? And what can you be the best in the world in? Again, you know, Jenny and I didn't compare slides, but I think you've just got the consistent message. Pick one thing and be brilliant at it. Just be brilliant at what you do. That's how BHAGs are created. It's not just about, I'm passionate. You know what, if you motivate an idiot, do you know what you get? A motivated idiot. <laughs> right? It's not just about having a great attitude. Right? You've got to have some sense behind it. You've got to have some good economic strategies. We are absorbers of public money. Never before have we been under as much scrutiny. So focus on outcomes, not just activities. And let's decide to be the very best. And the best way you can do that is stop wasting energy on politics and nonsense, right, that gets in the way. I did stand up in front of the national game. The 49 uh, county FAs plus the four from the armed forces. I reminded them, you know what? The great thing about working in London is you can walk around every corner and you will see a statue dedicated to an individual that has made a sacrifice. I'm still waiting to discover the statue that's dedicated to a committee. Right? Discuss, decide, get on with it. So, Gods of Management, great book by Charles Sandy. And again, look at the change in the CSPN. Who is going through, we'll do a yes card, who is going through the leadership programme currently supported by Sport England and sponsored through the CSPN? Who's going through it? Yep, great. Gods of Management not be on there, but as part of your extracurricular activities, look at the book. Because it talks about four styles of organisational structure. You can be the spider's web where you personally are the most important thing on the planet and you just do everything. Why? Because you want to and you think everyone else can't. It doesn't work for long. It might be good in a start-up and it might be good in a crisis. But ultimately, share the load. Secondly, don't be a silo. That one's called the temple. And you look at those pillars, right? They don't talk to each other. They just do what they want to do. And the poor sods at the bottom, otherwise known as customers, get confused because they're getting mixed messages sent down differently. Again, that's why I'm grateful for the work that the CSPN and Sport England do. Consistent messages. And what a great vote of confidence when Mike Diaper wrote to all the chairs and directors saying, I am enhancing the Sport England CSP team. So, Chris, to you and your team, big welcome for the next couple of days. You then look at the stars. Let's not be all individual premiership players. Where actually, I don't care about the organisation. I just have a personal con contract I want to get. I've seen some big law firms and accountancy firms who operate the stars model. They don't care about the firm. They've just got these clients and it's all about them. It's all about their egos and agendas. Now, the best model, the most sustainable model under good to great would be the net, where we're absolutely interlocked. We share each other's passion. We share each other's knowledge. We share each other's best practice and we just make it happen. So, can we have very few spiders' webs, unless you're in a crisis or a startup? Can we avoid the temple at all costs? Because that's all about bureaucracy. Can we make sure we don't have individuals who think they're great in the team? And can, as a CSP network, we work as one? I then was talking to some NGBs ahead of this, going, what do you really want from the county sports partnerships? And they turned around and said, we want the top part of the triangle. We want you to be strategic partners. We don't want you to be just transient and transactional. We don't want you to be functional. Well, they just do that. Let them do it. Actually, we want it to move through where if we're thinking of doing something, we'll bear you in mind. We might give you a call. Or if you're strategic partners, quite frankly, they call you in, say, we don't know what to do. We've got a blank piece of paper. Help us shape it. The minute you start getting the calls as strategic partners, you realise then you're indispensable. And as Jenny said about a general election, don't worry, just be brilliant, just be excellent. If you start getting that reputation, when somebody says to an NGB or another organisation, what do you think of CSPs or the CSPN? It's quite frankly, I wouldn't even commence a piece of work without getting them around the table and asking them what they think and to partner. Yes or no, who thinks they're at that stage now with 
NGBs and other organisations. Go on, let's have it. Bear your soul time. Good, 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 good. Yeah, I love the one yes and no. Where's my fence? Yeah, cool. And actually, it's about being easy to do business with. Mark McCormack, who set up the ING organisation, he coined this phrase in 1953, and I carry it about all the time. He says, when all things are equal, people like doing business with people they like. But then, this is the next bit that's really, really resonated with me. But when all things are unequal, people still do business with people they like. Do you all buy the cheapest handbag here? Go on, I won't ask for a card on that one, right? I've seen the Michael Kors, I've seen the Mulberry bags, right? You don't just buy on price, you buy on value. And actually, if you get somebody that you really enjoy doing business with, there's a fair chance you'll be a strategic partner. So actually, when all things are unequal, people will still do business with people they like. Let our organisation be the one that has no politics, that actually people enjoy doing business with. That way, we'll move into strategic partnership. So what's your elevator speech? This is a question. So if you were to meet a minister from another party and they said, what do you do? And you go, I'm the director or the chair of a CSP. And they went, what does that mean? And you were getting in the ground floor of an elevator going to the eighth floor. By the time you both got out of the doors, would they have handed you their business card and say, call me. We must do business together. What is your elevator speech for both you and the role you do and for your organisation? Time prevents me from giving you the full Metrobank one, but we open 8 till 8, Monday to Friday, 8 till 6 on a Saturday, 11 till 5 on a Sunday. We're open 362 days a year. We said we re revolutionised UK banking, so we decided to do away with bank holidays. We actually print your card in store in 15 minutes. We welcome dogs. We give them dog biscuits. We give them dog bowls. You wouldn't chain your kids up uh, in, against a fence outside of a bank, so why should you chain your dog? Uh, we also don't charge you for using your card in Europe. There's my card. Give me a ring. Can you do that? for your organisation, that's our job, that actually we're consistent. You've got the tools, they're all there, again, that's why I publicly would say, I think the CSPN and the CSPs are ahead of the county football associations, because actually they haven't got a consistent set of tools, so you get an inconsistent outcome. Andrew Carnegie, probably the Bill Gates of his day, the steel magnate, who left a massive legacy right throughout the world. If you go to Kendall in Cumbria and you go to their library, it still says, we are only here because of the legacy left by Andrew Carnegie, who has been dead over a century. But look at what he says. Teamwork is the ability to work together towards a common vision, the ability to direct individual accomplishments toward organisational objectives. It's the fuel that allows common people to obtain uncommon goals. That's why we're here for the next couple of days. And going forward, how do you look round corners? So actually part of the Metrobank philosophy is leaders get paid to worry about the next 12 months, numbers and performance, not tomorrow's. So we talk about three revolutions, technology. Technology revolution, the text is only 21 years old. Mobile phones are interesting. My daughter, when I was telling her that I got shouted at in 1971 by my mum for missing tea, she said, well, why don't you just give her a ring on your mobile? What? Technology is proliferating. I think sport has a job to do to embrace it. You shouldn't see coaches on a rainy night with a piece of paper and a pen and a clipboard, right? When everybody that they're talking to has a mobile phone that says, barcode me. I've got a barcode for every customer. I have no paper. I barcode everything. And actually, as a result of that, I can draw lots of insight. How are we going to use technology going forward? Who is our consumer? Who is our customer? How do we recognise what their needs and insight are? The reason we're open 8 till 8, Monday to Friday, 8 till 6 on a Saturday, 11 till 5 on a Sunday, 3, 6, 2 days a year, is because we asked our customers, what do you want? Well, the banks don't do that. They give you what they want to give you. That's their old way of doing business. And the world order, you've seen that the world's going to change. You've seen it already with consortium. I heard Nick say, we have to look at the way NGBs operate. I thought Jenny's response to the swimming sort of active people survey was brilliant. I just was disappointed in the chief exec when he says, we're going to have to look at the data. What? No, not too much. Make sure it's the lamppost that illuminates, not to give you a, a sort of position because you can't step forward. But think about those three. Write those three things down and say, 
What are the three things that are going to impact us going forward as a CSP? How can we embrace it? And ultimately, sell, sell, sell. So I want you to go away from here and write down the three stories, not pair up with your chair, bless you, write the three stories down that you've made a difference to someone's life. Because if there's 300 people in this room and you send those stories to Lee and to Richard, the great news is we've got a bestseller. We've just done a 900-page book on how the CSPs, the CSPN, can make a difference to people's lives. Can I have your commitment, show me your cards please, that you're going to write down the three stories that make a difference to somebody's life to the point where I could get you to name them, visit their home and let them go on a vox pop and say, this is why right, I've made a difference because of a CSP. Thank you for your commitment. So, does that mean doing lots of things differently around here, Chris? No. So let me just tell you why I've done the watermelon in the cloud. That watermelon, green, heavy, red flesh and pips, is 94% water content scientifically. That nice white fluffy cloud that you can see, that hasn't got pips and you can't grab it to drop it on your foot, is 97% water content. Do you realise a watermelon missed out on being a cloud by just 3%? <laughs> now the point is, that might be a small difference, but it's a big difference. Look at them. What's your 3%? In the language of Dale's Brailfords, is that 30 things doing 0.1% better? Look for that differential. I think the job we have Right? Sport will still be sport, will still be sport, with physical activity, with mental health, with social well-being. But ultimately, it ain't going to reinvent. He doesn't need to. He just needs to look for that 3% to be significantly better tomorrow, next year, the year after than it was. That's why things need to change. Or, because we've got a sporting audience, I thought I'd share this one with you. Are you a Steve Kelly or a Dick Fosbury? Who's Steve Kelly, you might ask? Precisely. World's leading high jumper in 1967. And Peyton Jordan, the Olympic US high jump coach, when asked in the Olympics at Mexico in 68, who would be doing Fosbury flops? He went, only Fosbury. I'm having no broken necks on my watch. Look at that picture. What does it tell you? Who's heard, before I mentioned it, of Steve Kelly? Lots of reds. Who's heard of Dick Fosbury? Lots of greens. When was the last time in international competition you saw somebody straddle the bar? Like Steve Kelly, right? That's the 3%. And what brought that 3% about, by the way, was that 18 months earlier, you didn't land in a sand pit. Somebody allowed you to put a mat behind the bar. What's our equivalent of the mat? What somebody just put there, we didn't really realise it could revolutionise what we do and how we do it. And the final thing about high jumping is a great phrase from Frank Dick and Steve Smith, coach and Olympic high jumper. And they coined the phrase, control the controllables. It's an international tournament at Zurich. Steve needed to get a good position to qualify for the Diamond League. And the wind of all winds decided to come up down on Zurich. And Steve just spent all the time in the warm-up track moaning. It's not fair, it's the wind. I can't believe tonight of all nights the wind's appeared. And Frank, who you know is a pretty straight talker, went, Steve, shut up. Can you control the wind, yes or no? No, Frank. Right then. So on the basis we ain't going to control that, and I don't know who's going to win the election, so I can't control it, what can we control? Steve could control his run-up, he could adjust it, he could adjust his movement. So we, Frank and Steve worked on all the things they could control. The one thing we can control if we walk out of here, it's just to choose to be brilliant, to choose to use all the energies for our customers and making more people more active more often, rather than just moan about some of the politics and the nonsense, the bureaucracy that we can't control. So let's take control and let's choose to be the chosen partner. Because if we're not going to do it now, somebody else might come along and do it for us. 
And if you're going to choose not to do it, step aside, let somebody who wants to do it absolutely have this passion, have the ability to see beyond the local agendas and understand the national picture and then bring it back to the local agenda and deliver excellence. Have something at stake. That's about just putting a predator in the tank. It'll keep you fresh. Actually, we shouldn't wait for others to put a predator in our tank. I think we should be on the game all the time, looking for those efficiencies, looking for better ways of doing things. And again, that's what the next couple of days are about. What do we have at stake? I think we have the health and the well-being of the nation at stake. And for one, I'm privileged to have been given that responsibility because I'm going to give everything I've got to go make it happen. So, the big question. I need your cards, please. Are we going to achieve these goals? Yes or no? Come on, I want a 100% response rate. Are we going to achieve these goals? Yes or no? Wow. It starts with us. There's only one, two, two no's in there. That means either you don't believe in your own ability or you don't believe that somebody in this room is going to do it as well. So we need to find out who that is and you need to challenge them. Put a line in your heart. If you're going to go out there, just put that line in your heart and go out there and make it happen, even if you're not so sure. Because you're the leaders. If the leaders don't believe and haven't got the line in the heart, don't expect your teams to follow you. And this, uh, I said earlier, when we had our first Greatest Sport board meeting, it was hold hands and contact the living. This is a picture of us at our away day uh, last week. <laughs> I suggested without parachutes because I've got the real ultimate belief that in fancy that. So we've got some parachute packs on there. So, I want you to thank you for listening and just say good luck. <laughs> so, I don't need another round of applause, don't want one, but there's no such thing as luck. Go look at a quote from Seneca, the Roman senator, because he said, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. There'll be opportunities along the way for us as a network. I just want you to find out whether or not you're going to be prepared. So I spoke a lot about Metrobank. Uh, there's a book uh, that we've written that's about leadership, customer service. Would anybody like this copy? 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 Grab it. Would anybody like this copy? Here's the moral of the story for the whole of the morning for the next two days. If you want something badly, get off your arse and make it happen. Thanks for listening. Cheers.